again, as if we were to go around this room, we'll find that each one of us, when we talk about how we've come, what we brought, and how we started, we would find that uh, with English, without English, with supports, without supports, with a job, with no job, uh, underemployed for a long time until we were able to find our way through. And I think that the story today and the issue today and the supports and the networks that are formed as a result of either involvement with organization, the skills for change, and all those who support the program, look at where we are today. When I came in 1960, there was no KPMG with any kind of program out there supporting anything out there that would have helped at the time. And we know now that uh, there is corporate social responsibility, everybody stepping up to the plate and recognizing the importance and going back again to the initial story that we all have to be engaged and we all have to be involved and we have to do that support. I would add, um, so I'm going to tie this back to the last question as well, but I think one of the, I, I used to wear the hijab. I stopped wearing it about three years ago and it was a very, very personal decision to me. Uh, but I've seen both sides of the coin. So I've seen what it was like to wear the hijab after 9-11. Uh, and 9-11 had nothing to do with why I was wearing it. But I've also seen what it was like to not wear it. And much of the travel that I did, going to Russia, Japan, all, all sorts of international places, it was interesting that the toughest time I had was coming right back to Canada. And so there is a, an, uh, there is a particular incident that I actually went to my MPP for uh, after I experienced it, which I had just met Stephen Harper in Vancouver, sorry, in uh, Tokyo, Japan, and I flew back to, uh, I was crossing through Vancouver, and I had a horrible incident where I was searched uh, in a particularly uh, sort of a, a very, what the right word would be, it was so horrific, actually. Yeah. Very intrusive, thank you, uh, manner. And uh, my friend was with me at the time, she was traveling back with me, and we knew why that had happened. There was absolutely no reason for me to be searched in that way. And I went to my MPP and I spoke to him about it, and. Uh, and it was something that actually woke me up to the realities of a post 9-11 world because I think I, I was very optimistic. I thought, well, you know, I, I mean, that, why would that happen in Canada? And I haven't experienced something like that in Toronto, uh, even in that post 9-11 period. So I thought, well, you know, it really isn't that bad here. But I think that incident actually really opened my eyes to that, the, that it is bad. Uh, that we have given ourselves permission to treat other people badly because of who they are, where they come from, or what they wear, or what religion they practice, uh, or what outside element might reveal what religion they practice. In general, it's good to be uh, secure, right? To follow the rules. But I'm afraid that sometimes our society goes to the paranoia stage, which I recently experienced and lost big international conference where I was invited to give a talk. And a short story which made me think, where are we going with this? I supposed to go to France. And uh, in a system, electronic system, um, my ticket, uh, electronic ticket was that my first name was switched with last name. So instead of Ekaterina Rogaeva, I was Rogaeva Ekaterina, big deal, right? So I was denied boarding. Uh, desperately trying to make it uh, lost the entire conference and many like it's international embarrassment right it's supposed to present so what happened in the process when i was trying to say well it's electronic thing this is my passport this is my id let's switch it what is the problem and isn't it obvious that my first name is katerina it's kind of very common name even in uh, in, in canada and in europe what's your problem they said, well, after September 11, we have to be careful with Canada, international flights, all of this. And it was not reasonable. But what is also was told me during this time is that it's interesting that it's happened to you uh, when I started to give a calls. Usually it's, uh, it's, it's uh, with Arabic names, which I thought, wow, I am, uh, you know, probably a very rare case in this situations. There are people who just by the way they look, the way they talk, uh, in a much more target list. 
So that's what I was, um, I think that it's opportunity uh, to, to think about this. Do we need this uh, unreasonable steps? And maybe we need to make uh, just a friendly society, therefore people work for Canada. Look, I was treated very nice in Canada, and with my car, I will be working for Canada for the entire my life. And I think uh, having entrepreneurial centers is also really good. Um, the extent to which women are responsible for their families means that they are responsible for health, they're responsible for caretaking, they're responsible, I mean, they have two and three jobs. And I think that, um, you know, the, the health issue and aging issues are two big issues that we have not yet turned our mind to with respect to immigrant families. I know of, you know, one, you know, there are a few agencies, for example, that have tried to deal with this. For example, the Immigrant Women's Health Center has a bus. So they go around to various workplaces because those women don't have time to go to doctors. Or their work hours are such that they're unable to um, really take time off work. So issues around family-friendly policies time off, dealing with sick kids, are really, really, really critical. And we also have to, you know, think about, you know, issues such as, you know, the cost of housing, uh, women facing situations of violence within the home, which is still largely, uh, people don't really want to talk about that. And increasingly we're finding that some communities are prepared to address that issue. So it will take a whole panoply of solutions to, uh, and you know, many of the barriers that, that immigrant women face are also faced by women who are not immigrants, women who have been born here. Um, and then of course we have many more immigrants coming to the country. So the extent to which we are an immigrant society, um, you know, should not make us think that, you know, it's, and you know, these are problems with only people who are just coming here have. They are fundamentally, uh, there are fundamental uh, changes that require the policies and i.e. legislation and the duties. And uh, again, there is always a solution, but it's, uh, somebody mentioned just by accident, saying, well, Katerina, how about you take English as second language? But I didn't have time. I was mom of two, and uh, I was working like, beyond of my ability, like already stretched my hours. And then what happened, it was somebody suggested, how about Toastmaster Club? And I don't know, this type of information, again, I, I'm not sure if it's even supported by government, but that saved my life. And uh, I started to go to maybe not very appropriate avenue, but I took it because it was like just one hour a week and people clap whatever I said. <laughs> and then I felt, wow, I'm accepted. And it was like, blah, 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 blah. I was happy. <laughs> and then what it is, it's a survival again mechanism. Then you have to do, you know what, you have to do something. But it's also feedback from people. At that time, I was working with technician, very uh, Canadian, uh, nice man, and I know that many people shy to correct because they think, oh, maybe you will be offended. I never was offended, I need it. And uh, what happened is I was using some words, obviously, never was corrected, but there's just an uh, anecdotal scene is that I was asking my technician, uh, Kevin, saying, well, you know, can I enjoy you? Instead of, can I join you in experiment? <laughs> so finally he said, oh my god, like, you know, Katerina, this is different. <laughs> you can, but... <laughs> so, uh, you laugh, you cry, you, you deal with your life, uh, but uh, I think that it's, it's come from the positive attitude to... And then, of course, finally I learned how to force myself to watch lots of boring news because people speak short sentences and that's what I do when I go as a volunteer to schools uh, or again it's back to the uh, skills for change I'm part of the government program passage to Canada so I go to different schools once in a while uh, sometimes it's a junior sometimes high school sometimes uh, second language uh, people and I'm giving them all kind of tips well do you know this that use it and it's turned out that many many people 
don't have this information about those master club and stuff. So that's what I encourage and back to the mental health, uh, that uh, as a result of stress, post-traumatic um, instances, all of those uh, that could be and should be discussed under what we call family-friendly policies. And uh, we need to push for more of those in our workplaces and also policies that would um, complement uh, what organizations are doing. Mm -hmm.